Hello, morning enthusiast. Ever wonder why dieting and healthy eating is darn hard? Well, truth is, most adults have tried one, two, or several diets based on a cookie cutter approach. One reason cookie cutter diets didn't work or don't work is because people are not cookies. Our next guest wrote the book, The Food Codes, to teach you how to eat without guilt and shame for the rest of your life. The Food Code also teaches you what your body needs for food at different times, different seasons, and when different stresses of affect your life. Morning enthusiasts, it is an honor to introduce a special guest, Lana Nelson. Lana is an intuitive nutritionist, a speaker, and a wellness educator. With her groundbreaking new book, The Food Codes, Lana gives us a way of living and relating to food that has been desperately needed for as long as people have been around. You don't have to wonder anymore what to eat. You can simply ask Lana. You're listening to the Best Morning Routine Ever podcast, the show that proves no one stumbles upon success ever. With your host, Lou Need. Every Mondays and Thursdays, we deliver cold heart evidence behind the power of a robust morning routine. Get ready to be transformed by the renewal of your mind. All right, morning enthusiasts, welcome back to the show. Really quick, I want to share with you my new favorite company that is changing the way we stream our favorite shows today, even the hard to find Caribbean channels. Being from Haiti, it is hard to view the carnivals in Haiti here in the States. But with Ivy TV, that's all in the past, y'all. IreeTV.co is a one-time solution for all your IPTV needs, from the best quality of HD channels to live events, sporting events, news, drama, movies, your favorite local shows, and even the premium content. Even those hard to find Caribbean channels, carnivals, concerts, pageants, and other pay-per-view events, Ivy TV provides access to it all. What's great is you can easily connect to all your devices your Roku, Apple TV, Smart TV, any tablet, Android phones, um, iPhones or iPads, as well as their web player. My friends, you get all this for a low monthly and annual discounted price you can't get anywhere else. I would highly recommend checking out Irie TV at www.irietv.co and start streaming and be Irie during quarantine. All right, morning enthusiasts, let's get right to the show with Lana Nelson and talk about why cookie cutter diets don't work as she decodes food for us. Lana, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. People often call me Lana from Montana. I live in the northwest uh, corner of the United States right next to Canada. So Lana from Montana is very, very glad to be here with you, Lunid. Thank you. My pleasure. I am enthusiastic and super excited to have you on board. I cannot wait to dig into your book and, and what you're working on currently. So um, let's get to it, Lana from Montana. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us a little bit about your background. I have a pretty vi- varied and wide background, as most people do. Okay, the more life you live, the more background you have. And so uh, growing up in a, you know, from the very beginning, I grew up in a fairly large family. I had, uh, I, there were six of us, six brothers and sisters, three and three. And then uh, studying, I had, I really wanted to be a veterinarian because I loved animals so much. But uh, my veterinarian studies actually never, never came to be. I just loved animals and I, um, I married and had six children, which was never planned, so to speak. Um, but I just adored and loved my children. And in the course of my career, I'll, t- I'll touch on some of the things. I have been in the food and catering business. I had a catering business, which uh, I love to cook. I love food. And I, and in that, I, I learned in, I learned to, um, I got re- very interested in nutrition for my sweet family and wanting to feed them well. Okay. Wanting to feed my little children really good things, not junk food and so on. And so learning to cook lots of good, good uh, whole food 
foods for them. And that was kind of in the revolution of, you know, uh, you make your own bread again and so on. So getting back into that. And so cooking uh, morphed into a catering business and more. I was very creative. Eventually, uh, it took a turn into my um, my partner at that time. Um, we had a dental lab. And so I uh, learned the dental lab trade. And so as a, as a young mother, um, I, I became single and I... Uh, with my six little children. It was just not a really good situation. And so I sprouted out on my own with my six little kids and started my own dental lab, which I became very successful at. I was in the cutting edge of implant dentistry with um, some dentists in the area where I was. And uh, became a consultant even for dental implants and so on. And uh, I was one morning, early one morning on the way to deliver a set of dentures to a woman so she could eat her dinner well that day. I was rear-ended by a semi-truck. That ruined my health for many, many years. I went from a, you know, very vibrant, busy, 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 go, 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 busy woman to 10 years of suffering extreme migraine headaches and pain from the bottom of my feet to the top of my head. Now still having to support my little family of six children. And through that, I turned to food and nutrition. Um, I I went the medical gamut. And one day, one of my neurologists said, with this pain you're having and this head and neck problem, you know, I would suggest you see a chiropractor. And I just thought, oh, my mother saw a chiropractor when, when I was a young girl. I've not been to one. So I did. I saw a chiropractor who helped me quite a bit with the headaches. And then one day I said to a friend, of mine, and I was t- I was um, doing a lot of natural therapies at that time. I I was uh, resorting to massage therapy about you know two or three times a week, and a chiropractor at weekly. And I and I said to a friend of mine, you know, I should marry a chiropractor. I'm seeing one three times a week, <laughs> <laughs> and you know, we laughed as girls will do. And as you know, Lunid, that what you think about sometimes those thoughts are energy. And I met a most wonderful man on a blind date, had mutual friends and long story short, found that mutual friends had tried to get us together for five years. And both of us had resisted that we'd gone different ways, but um, we finally met on a blind date. And he was a chiropractor who specialized in the problems that I had, which were diagnosed at that time as fibromyalgia. So with that and his energy techniques, what people these days are calling energy medicine or energy healing, so to speak, with his techniques and his specialty techniques in the chiropractic and energy field, within two weeks, literally, I was out of pain. I was, um, I was out of that discomfort and free from that, no more headaches and so on. And within a year we were married and we combined six children, my six children with his family of six children. Wow. How's that for a while? <laughs> Oh, wow. (laughs) Yeah. So speaking of morning routines, believe me, I've practiced morning routines for many years. It's what I live by. (laughs) It literally is, you know, you cannot have, you can't have helter skelter with a huge family. Well, you do have helter skelter if you don't have some kind of a morning routine with a large family. So that's a little bit of my background and story. And as, so in the dental, lab days, I I continued uh, after we were married for about six years, having satellite practice. We moved to the town that my husband lived in and I continued my um, practice with my dental lab and eventually just started working with him because of my love of food and nutrition, herbs and so on. Um, 
and working with him in his office, I said, you know, we need to have, he had, he had clients, patients come from all over uh, the United States and Canada and some other countries. And he dealt with chronic illness, chronic diseases that people were not getting help in mainstream medicine with like fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, and many, many others. So I said, you are helping so many people with your with your therapy, but you need the, you're missing something and it's food. So with his, using his technique, basically, um, have you ever heard of muscle testing, Lunid? Mm -hmm. I mention it in my book, but have you ever heard of muscle testing? No, go ahead. Okay. Well, it's a way to test and for your listeners, it's a way to check the strength of a muscle. So, um, and a lot of um, neurologists will use muscle testing. If you think about when they are uh, giving you a tap on the knee, uh, you know, it's whether your, your, your knee bops out or not, but they will um, test the strength of a, a side of the body and see, like, hold your leg up and test the strength or hold your arm and test the strength, which will relate to different parts of the brain. So muscle testing can actually um, access the subconscious brain or the subconscious mind and which you have all knowledge of uh, your whole body in there. But we can talk more about that later if you're interested. But so muscle testing and through testing muscles, um, I found how a, a, a technique basically to test the patients to what were their best foods that they needed for uh, healing their body for the to get better from the discomfort they were having the sluggishness or you know my muscles are so stiff and sore i can't move and so on so to help them in their energy healing journey so fast forward that I really couldn't help everyone on the planet. Um, and people were saying, you need to write a book. You need to write a book about this. So eventually I did. Mm -hmm. And that's how my book came about to teach you how to um, find your best foods. Because back and forth, we are just being torn. This food's good for you. No, it, it's not. Don't eat that. That's bad for you. So we're, we're having so much turmoil in what really is good for us these days for eating. And, you know, so everyone is different. There's no one particular diet or plan for every person, no, nor for you, like say maybe in the spring, summer or fall, could, you could be having different needs for different foods. So my technique shows you how to find your best foods at any time and for any purpose, even for like your morning ritual. I test my foods in the morning and what do I need for, ah, what's my best foods for? What are my best foods for today? Uh, and so forth. So does that tell you my, a little bit about my history yes <laughs> yes it does and i and i love the the notion thoughts become things thoughts are energy you said it you put it out there you're gonna marry a chiropractor and sure enough you did and and increased and doubled the size of your family <laughs> <laughs> Doubled my happiness to the, you know, it took my happiness and joy with my family to the 10th, you know, the 10th power or whatever that is. He actually adopted all six of my children and the Associated Press caught that one and sent it, you know, across the nation as the and dubbed us the Brady Bunch times two. <laughs> <laughs> That's really great. Uh, I'm hearing from your 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 story and sharing about the book. I, I'm really excited to get into the the details. So it, it's true that the body knows exactly what to eat for optimal health and wellness. And it, the body, if we spend the time to connect and get to know the body, and we can hear it respond, we can hear it um, give us um, feedback. Yes, you are exactly right. Through intuition, meditation, you can get feedback through meditation, through your thoughts. And that is it, where that those thoughts are coming from literally are your subconscious mind. So the subconscious mind can tell you what 
foods uh, get you out of that quandary of what is good for me right now. Uh, in my in my book, The Food Codes Intuitive Eating for Every Body, I give you pictures, very simple how you can learn this. I give you pictures and ideas and actually, you know, questions to ask. I've just put it all out there. So very simple baby steps to testing a muscle. And muscle testing is like a lie detector test, okay? Yes or no answer. It connects to the subconscious of the body. It actually connects to the skin. A lie detector test will will detect a lie or a yes or no question. And that's uh, your brain is very similar to a lie detector in that it is a binary computer. It will give you a yes answer or a no answer with a strong muscle or a weak muscle. But in the in this sense of a lie detector test, you will have a different, um, just a different uh, frequency on the skin with a lie or a truth. And that's what, how a lie detector tests. <clears throat> but you can very simply, um, if you'd like, I'll give you an easy example. Well, I'm looking. So with in your book, I know you mentioned the, the beauty about this is you don't have to go see a professional to do this. Your partner can do it. A friend can do it, right? You're just you simply, can do it yourself. You can do it yeah. yourself. And so it's easy. Um, it's easy accessibility because you can just have the partners put their arm out. And I don't know if you, you want to get into the details. And by simply saying my name is giving their true name and then my name Say, doing it again and t- testing the arm and then saying my name is giving a false name and you can actually sense the muscle uh, weakness. Yes, you can. And you can do that with yourself too. You can, you can test your animals that way. You can work with someone at a distance, um, kind of like uh, remotely. So you're wherever you are on the planet. I'm wherever I'm on the planet. And uh, you can use yourself as a remote tester, like that little lie detector test by using your fingers and the strength of your fingers or the strength of your arm. You can also, some people use pendulums. Um, as an instrument for a yes or no answer. A lot of people are using pendulums to do it as well. So through muscle testing technique, uh, kinesiology, some people call it that, dowsing or using a pendulum, which is super duper easy. You can get a yes or no answer, for instance. And in my book, I give you a really big list, um, a page you can go to for a list of whole foods. So I teach you how uh, you can you can test which are my best vegetables right now, which are my best uh, fruits right now. You know, what is my best uh, source of protein? Am I am I really um, do grains bother me? Because some people find that grains are bothering them and then they find that's not really the underlying cause. So is that pretty is that um, give an example yeah, of the uh, muscle testing. Now that I think back of it, when I was seeing a chiropractor after a car accident in December, um, he did that a lot with the arm and just testing um, which side of the body is weak and which that determines what he could work on because the body Perfect. would tell him. Uh-huh. which area to focus on for work. So yes, it's very... So you're, you can ask those questions of food as well. And the very cool thing is you can uh, use it for grocery shopping. It doesn't have to be like a whole food. You can say, oh, there's a can of soup. This looks like a really good, uh, a good brand or, you know, uh, it, it just has very few ingredients in it. Is this something that's really good for me right now? And you can test it right in the store. You can actually use it while you're, while you're grocery shopping, uh, at the farmer's market and more when you're eating out, even at a buffet or a restaurant. So using muscle testing to get feedback from the body on what to eat and when to eat it. Exactly. It's you Im- got it. It's impressive. Tell us about um, um, I, about tr- being transformed by the renewal of your mind. That is one focus on the show. And I and I love your twist on it. We were talking earlier and you says it's being renewed. Uh, it's renewing the um, relationship with the body, becoming best friend again, reigniting that relationship with food um, to, to actually, um, have a holistic, uh, a diet that is uh, pertaining to each individual. You bet. Well, we think of a lot of things as outside of us. Okay. Our world is really inside of us with our relationship with ourself and, you know, with technology and, and that we're, 
we're, we're getting more and more outside of ourself. So being transformed by the renewal of our mind and also our body, our relationship with what I, when I was writing this book, I realized that what, um, and I'm very interested in relationships, you know, we are clan people, people are clan members. Okay. And we love relationships, different kinds and so on, but Our first relationship, it just hit me one day as I was writing, it's actually with food. And that as a baby is being um, developed in the mother's womb, the, the baby will take the food that it needs for growth from the mother's body. The mother's body interfaces. And if the mother's not, you know, not eating a proper diet, and she has those nutrients in her body stored, the baby's body will take that. So, and as the baby is born, that relationship, it, um, he or she is placed to the breast if they're a lucky baby and, and given food as you grow. But if you think about a baby that you try to overfeed, this little baby is in a high chair and you try to push one more, you shovel one more spoonful, that baby splatters it right back at you. Mm-hmm. A A baby knows and has the relationship with food. I know when I'm hungry. I know when I'm full. We lose that relationship to our hunger and to our satiety and our fullness as we, as we grow and as food is pushed upon us or you, oh no, no, don't eat that. You won't like it or something like that. So using we can actually um, get back to our relationship with food and being satisfied within ourselves and feeding ourselves for better energy, better cognition, um, renewal of the entire body. If you're ill right now, maybe food is one of your best friends. Maybe you have, have lost that relationship with food. Okay. Does that make sense, Looney? It does. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm sitting here thinking we, as we get older, we do lose that relationship and it, we, it becomes, um, uh, unhealthy relationship with food. It becomes an emotional eating. It becomes trying to, um, uh, cover up some type of emotional blockage that we don't know how to deal, but the best um, way we, we can do it is food to satisfy that, um, that distress of some sort. So yes. what, what other reasons have you seen that we, that causes us to lose such relationship? Um, just a lot of what you have mentioned, other people forcing upon us like good intentions with a mom. So if a, if a parent knows, I see people, I see parents going around going, my, my child is not eating. My child is not eating. I, even as a young mom took my, my little first daughter to the doctor and I said, she won't eat. She's not, you know, I'm trying to feed her every day. And he goes, does she eat sometimes? And I said, yeah. And he goes, she'll eat when she's hungry. (laughs) <laughs> and I thought, oh, okay, well, I'm trying to feed her these really good foods and stuff. Maybe she doesn't like those. Let her eat what she wants. Let her pick and choose. Oh, okay, what a novel idea. But so we try to, so we've had foods forced on us. So getting back to that relationship, we can, we can do it by, and I, this is cool because I tell you in my book, how to know how to gauge. You can, you can use muscle testing to gauge as you're eating and get gaze as you're eating slowly. When you're actually full, we totally forget that. And when am I really hungry? And then it's not three meals a day is what we've been taught, you know, and then some diet plans will say, no, 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 don't eat, you know, fasting and don't eat until, you know, for so many hours, maybe that's good for you. And maybe it's not. So being able to test what things like that are good for you. But here's a really cool story of me first, first knowing and remembering when I was full. And it was not many years ago, I had made myself a cup of soup, like a a chicken soup, chicken noodle soup. I sat down with it. I just really calmed myself and I was just kind of turning inward and taking a sip at a time, a spoonful and a sip at a time. And it was just tasting it and feeling it. It was delicious, just a simple little chicken soup. And I got about two thirds of the way down the cup and my All of a sudden, with the last uh, sip, I felt like a clunk and a lock. 
in my body. It was, it was just a feeling of course, but it was like, whoa. And my body said, that's enough. Mm. I looked in my cup and I thought, well, there's just a little bit more here. I can sip that back real fast, you know, waste not, want not. And my body said, that's enough. And I got up, I poured the rest of it down the disposal and it was like a freeing feeling. It was, it was very, very monumental for me. So as that, I, I, you know, learned that. And so the more you practice that, the less you will eat, the more you will be satisfied. It's self-discipline that you're building, developing in this process as well. That's, that's very, very true to not just do what you have been taught, clean your plate. You know, there are, there are people that are starving in this world and no, it's very freeing, freeing. Thank, thank that food, you know, that you, I thank you so much. And, you know, bless your food is another thing that I have learned to, and it can change frequencies. We're talking about vibrations, but, um, you're, uh, your food can have a fire, a uh, higher vibration if you give gratitude and thanks for it and bless it as well. I've actually heard that if you say grace before you eat, it does take you to a higher vibration, but also thinking positively about what you're eating. You're thinking mm-hmm. the farmer for um, harvesting. You're thinking where the food came from, from the ground. You're thinking about um, how it's going to nourish the body. And it's it, people may call it a placebo effect or no, no, no placebo, but you actually or when you're thinking positively about what you're eating and actually eating with intention and, and eating um slowly it your body absorbs it better the same way if you eat when you're angry and when you're stressed yeah and scientifically it has been proven that on a loaf of white bread that the you know testing the frequency or vibration of it before let's say a gratitude and a prayer over it the frequencies were higher after the gratitude prayer but if you think about this too lunid um people will say oh i know i shouldn't eat this or i shouldn't eat that and then they eat it it's bad for me and then they eat it yep okay is that good for you or bad for you but let's say that piece of chocolate cake that you've been resisting and resisting and resisting because it's not on your diet let's say what would happen if you ate that with extreme gratitude. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. And just with, "Mm, this is delightful, delicious, and telling your body, this is the best thing for me right now. Mm -hmm. Would that be much better than saying, I know this is bad for me. And then having all that guilt, no, this is delightful. And this is good. What actually happens is that you eat less and you're more satisfied. And it's a wonderful thing. Yeah. Instead of that beating yourself up like, yeah, I ate that. And now I have to diet for three days. <laughs> it's mentally exhausting versus if you just enjoy it, you'll be satisfied and you won't go back for more because yes. you, you actually were in the moment and present and took in, took it in fully. Yes. Instead of that guilt, that shame that you have to walk around with, mm-hmm. which is uh, just not healthy at it's all. It's too much. <laughs> it is. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about um, communicating with the subconscious through food. All right. You can actually. Um, so communicating through food. Well, muscle testing to find what the best foods are for you. Mm-hmm. OK. And then blessing them to have the highest. Well, and and shopping shopping as well. You can shop. Like I said, you can, you can go into the, let's say the fruit and vegetable aisle and you have a plethora of fruits and vegetables these days, different kinds of apples. So you look at these apples and you go, okay, here are the organic apples. And, and here are the apples that are not organic. And sometimes the organic will not test as good as the other apples. So you can use your muscle testing to test which apple is the better apple for you if those are your best uh, best food because you really don't know who fingered that apple or who came who just sn- sneezed it or how it came to be at the gro- sneezed on it I should say or how it came to the grocery store so you can use the the muscle testing and to communicate with food in many many ways and you know some foods are really that we call foods these days that are bagged or bottled or, or boxed are really not food. They're, you know, they are made of lots and lots of chemicals. So food versus non-foods is, is a thing as well. 
So your what's your take on organic then? Um, so you're saying use the muscle testing to choose. It's don't you're not always going to opt for organic when you're shopping. Well, across the board, if you want to just test good and bad, organic seems that it would be the better. And this day and age. There is so much untruth in um, what you're getting at the store. The best, the best place to find food is locally, locally grown, locally sourced, whether it be uh, proteins, whether it be vegetables and so on, less travel time, but that's not always available for, for people. So d- uh, do your best. Here is my motto. Okay. Cause sometimes an organic is the best. Sometimes the non-organic will test the best just because who knows? Okay. Your subconscious knows, but my, my motto really is do your best, eat your best and bless the rest. Hmm, that like just that. takes up the slack. I like that. Eat the best <laughs> and, t- and bless the do rest. Do your best and bless the rest. Yes. Yeah. Um, go ahead and tell us about your robust morning routine. Uh, you have a full house, literally. <laughs> you have 12, 12 kids in the house. How do you manage? How's your morning like so that you can get up and write, so you can get up and run your business and, and be Alana Nelson? Okay. Well, right now, most of my children are grown and married and I have 33 grandchildren. Okay. Wow. These, um, these kids have been prolific. And uh, so right now, most of the time it's my husband and myself in the house, but growing up with my kids, I had breakfast planned. Food was really important. Um, I had you know, six boys, six girls. Girls will be finicky about food and boys, you just need to feed them. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, they need to be food. So I would have a good breakfast ready for them. I had a cooked breakfast ready most of the time and just the aroma would get my boys out of bed. Even my girls, it's like, okay, breakfast is ready. So that would get them up. And, you know, then organization, having them set out, uh, set your, and I still do this. Okay. Set out what you're going to be using the next morning. So set it out the night before. That's one of my key tips for preparation for a morning routine is start it the night before. So you're prepared the next morning. So know what you're going to be doing the next morning. So that being said, I still, I decide on, I test what foods are best for me. Um, Do I need a cup of herbal tea? Do I need something warm to drink? Occasionally, you know, because people will tell you, oh, you always need a little something warm to drink or drink only water or drink only tea or drink only, only have your, you know, your so many ounces of green juice in the morning. All that can change. So I will test those kind of things. What is it that I need? What are the foods that are best for me? And I have my, um, I have my clothes decided by the next, the the night before it's like, okay, I'm going to wear this because this is what my day is going to be like. So, and then I take care of my toiletry, my, um, you know, my morning, um, sometimes I will shower or bathe very quickly to get ready. And I think as women, facial care is really important. So I have a, a really quick facial care routine. And then I have my, um, I followed different programs over the years. I've loved Hal Elrod's uh, The Morning Miracle. And I've followed Tony Robbins in his personal power and many others. And so I do kind of switch. I will follow one of those kind of programs for a while, but switch it up. But one of my things that I really love love, uh, for my morning routine, um, is, and I just want a one little tip too, um, with exercise. Some people get out and do lots of heavy exercise. You can test what is your best exercise. Sometimes it might be sleeping in another 20 minutes in the morning, literally because you, you're exhausted and, and you need that, but testing your exercise right now, I am, I'm doing push-ups and jumping on the trampoline. So push-ups for my, my arms and my shoulders and to keep those things firm, but, um, preparing ahead and stretching in the morning. And so I like to do first thing in the morning as I'm lying in bed before I get up, I have something that I call the 30 second gut flush. You can, uh, you can look at that on YouTube just by just kind of typing in the 30 second gut flush, or you can find it on my website at, uh, 
thefoodcodes.com. But it is just a way, and I made a video so it'll, so you can um, do that. But it's just a way of getting you going. It's getting your it's getting your um, intestines going. It's getting your blood flow going. It helps to wake you up, and it helps with um, balancing the brain and so forth. And it's just a method of taking your right hand under your left rib, brushing down about ten times, moving that to the center of your body, brushing down about ten times and then taking your left hand, brushing under your left rib down about 10 times. So I do that morning uh, before I get out of bed. I do it and just make a habit out of it. And I do it when I go to sleep at night. It helps me sleep better. So I do that. And then I have my, some of my paper set out. And I just go and I meditate for a little bit. Now, meditation uh, to some people is like, this takes hours. No, it can be really, really quick. I just get myself set and tuned in with my day. I have my, I have a really busy, busy biz, business. And so I do have my schedule and I, I look at that and say, okay, this is who I have that I'm working with today. But as a young mom, I had a schedule too. Uh, do I need to do this or this or this? And do you know what do I need to do today for my with my family? So knowing what your day, what's coming up, you can plan for it better and be ready. So with that, and I usually start with a prayer or intention. Okay, so everything is with prayer and intention. So I start with that, and then I. Just look at what my what my day is going to be about after I've had, you know, my my cup of water, my tea, and um, that's pretty much where I go. I decide. I love what Tony Robbins says: decide what you really want, and then plan for that. What your, where your direction is going to go, follow through with that. And then if you've got some bad habits going on, if you've got some bad habits of just like climbing back into bed when you really should be getting up or being distracted from something, just interrupt that, create a new pattern. And so in the journaling, I will ask specifically, um, and I have a folder, okay, of ideas. I just have a little folder that I put in of to do in the mornings. So if I find a, something that I would like, oh, I'd like to add that to my morning routine, I just pop it in my in my folder. And it helps me to be more aligned with doing that in the morning. So my food is very important. Um, blessing is important to me. Journaling. Uh, journaling, gratitude journaling is, is just marvelous morning or night. And then I also do what's called non-dominant handwriting, tuning in with my subconscious mind and asking a question that I might need. What would be the best, uh, what, what's the best thing to, for me to do today? Or, um, I have, I'm just not feeling up to snuff right now you know, what, what do I need to do to feel more perky or some other question? And then, so non-dominant handwriting, you have a piece of paper in front of you, you write the question and then you use your non-dominant or the, the other hand that you don't normally write with to just almost bring that, bring that answer onto the paper. Could be a couple of words and it takes practice to do that as well. But I've been doing non-dominant handwriting for many, many years. It connects the brain, but it also just, you, you'd be surprised sometimes with the answers you get from your own inner know or your subconscious. Yeah, the subconscious is at your demand. It's um at your a call waiting to give you answers, but you have to be still. You have to yes. be quiet to hear it and, and yes. ask the right questions. Tony Robbins is very big as asking the right questions, clear, precise words, because yes. the conscious the subconscious is um is is tuning in. Yes. So those are my my ideas. Yeah, those are um, incredible. I like the um, 30 second gut flush because it, the benefits are outstanding. I mean, it slims the belly and reduces belly fat, increases oxygen in your body, better blood circulation. It's really um, releasing bloating and, and, and gas in the morning and throughout yes. the day. So you, are, you get more enzymes into your system so you can digest your food better, absorb your food better. Exactly. 
and it balances your nervous system very nicely and organs and glands. I, I have a list of uh, an immense list of people that have given me testimonies of all the wonderful things from the 30 second gut flush. So can help in many, many ways. That's a, an addition to the morning routine. That's a first, Alana. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's a first. I've heard uh, the other things, um, success leave clues. Um, a lot. You are the the gratitude journal, the starting the night before, the, like a brain dump and, and uh, outlining what is it you need to do tomorrow, even to the T as to what you're wearing the next day. It really sets you up for success because you have to plan ahead. Mm-hmm. If you don't plan, you pl- if you know if you're doing no planning, you pl- you plan to fail, and you embody that and you express that very well today. And I thank you for your time. Thank you for coming on the show. Uh, let us know how can we connect with you. You can. Uh, and one thing, thank you so much. It's been a joy to be here with you. And you can connect with me um, on the food codes plural the food codes. Dot com. I have a wonderful blog. I've got lots of lots of good things for you there. You can um, buy my book at Amazon.com. Just look for The Food Codes and Lana Nelson. It's The Food Codes, Intuitive Eating for Every Body. And it's much more than just eating and food. I teach you how to cook and how to prepare using your foods. and Great recipes in the book as well. So I will put all that on the show notes. Lana Thank you for coming on the show. I will see you at the top of your best morning routine ever. Thank you, Lou Need, and thank you. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Bye-bye. Well, all right, morning enthusiasts, that's it for today's show. Thank you for tuning in. If you love the Best Morning Routine Ever podcast, we'd love to hear from you. So go ahead and subscribe, rate, and give a review on iTunes or Google Play. While you're at it, tell a friend about the show. Be sure to visit bestmorningroutineever.com and our Facebook group to join the conversation, access the show notes, and discover our fantastic free bonus content. Until next time.